Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. It's been an awesome week grinding back up from the very bottom, and in this video, I wanted to give a few tips that will hopefully help you get your feet under you in the early game. So far, I've really enjoyed a lot of the changes they've made to the game, and the extra depth added by the hideout and all the mechanics around it have opened up a lot of new objectives and ways to make progress, and more importantly, profit. In many ways, the early game has remained the same, but in others, it now offers new ways to make progress and upgrade your character, which helps change up the flow and keep things interesting. So without any further delay, let's dive into a few tips for the early game in the 0.12 patch. The very early stages of this patch felt really unforgiving, even for a fairly veteran player like myself, and I especially found the cost of healing after every death was eating into my profits pretty hardcore. At a certain point, I just decided to try and upgrade the medical wing in the hideout as much as possible, and those investments immediately paid off. The passive regeneration is still fairly slow, but the amount of meds you can craft after just a few upgrades to the medical wing is really a huge benefit to you. After one of the first upgrades, you'll be able to craft a car med kit from a bandage, painkiller, and a splint, which lets you build useful med kits before you're able to purchase them from therapist. The price is about the same, but it can be a useful way to turn random looted meds into a useful item as well. Upgrade the med station again, and you can open up some really awesome crafting options. First, you're able to break down two car med kits into three pieces of medical scraps, which are basically raw crafting materials for first aid kits. Next, you take two medical scraps and two army bandages, and you can craft two IFACs, which are among the best medkits in the game. What I have been doing is buying two car medkits after I die, healing with them but leaving a small amount left on both, and then breaking them into scraps and turning those scraps into IFACs. In the end, you can actually profit from this cycle, because it works out to creating six IFACs from every four car medkits you break down. You can either keep those IFACs for yourself, or make a tidy little profit by selling them on the flea market. You'll need to install the generator into your hideout and track down some fuel cans to power it before you can craft anything, but that doesn't take too long and I'll show you where you can find some fuel in this video as well. Some other useful hideout upgrades for the early game are the intel center and the water collection unit. The intel center will reduce your scav cooldown and give you more rewards from quests, and the water collector helps you keep your hydration up, which is definitely convenient. Honestly though, every module in the hideout seems super interesting, but it's definitely going to take some time to get it all upgraded. Interchange was already my favorite map for early game leveling and scavenging, but in the 0.12 patch it just got even better with the addition of tons of industrial and tech loot which is needed for hideout upgrades, so it's very valuable. Knowing where this stuff spawns should help you farm it to upgrade your own hideout, but most of it also sells for big money on the flea market or even just to the traders. This loot is common and plentiful on the map, and is mostly spread out between the three main big box stores in the mall. Idea, Goshan, and Oli. For those who need a quick lesson on how to differentiate between the three, it's very easy since they are conveniently color coded. Blue is for Idea, orange is for Goshan, and green for Oli. If you're facing the front of the shopping mall, Idea is on the far left side, Goshan is in the middle but at the very back end, and Oli is on the far right of the mall. Idea is a great place to go for a quick haul of electronics loot like computer parts, camera lenses, and light bulbs. Most of the high value items will spawn in the small office against the wall to the left of the cash registers. On the desks and shelves in these two rooms there's plenty of loot spawns, but it can definitely be a danger zone so be careful when approaching it. Statues and other high value loot can spawn in the back area as well, in the TV stands and bookshelves. Goshan is a great place to look for tools and the large hand drill which you need for the workbench upgrades in the hideout. These can be found in the back storage shelves leading out to the loading bays, and commonly spawn fairly high value loot items like elite pliers, metal cutting scissors, and many other things. The main store area of Goshan 
is also the best place in the game to search for Tushanka cans for the therapist quests, and you can even just grab a ton of these cans and trade them for a bunch of AKMs to proper. Finally, we come to Oli, which is the place to be if you want to make some raw profit off of industrial loot. Pretty much any of the store shelves here can spawn valuable items like water filters, motors, silicone tubing, gas analyzers, and helix coils, which all sell for above 10,000 rubles. Oli is also the best place I've found so far to look for gas canisters, and I found multiple on every single trip through this store. There's more than enough loot in there for a whole squad on most raids, so it's quickly become a hot spot, and I suggest you be careful and play sneaky or get in and out really fast to avoid getting killed. I can't guarantee you're going to survive the trip, but I can pretty much guarantee you will make a nice profit if you spend some time looting the three big stores in Interchange, and you don't need any keys or special items to get access to this loot. From my experience doing the level 1 to 15 grind so far in this patch, the same trusty early game weapons are still yet to be dethroned, but there are a few new options available as well to make things interesting. The SKS and the Vepr or AKM both fire 7.62 by 39 rounds, and the 7.62 PS rounds are some of the best that you have available in the early game, and arguably even into the mid game. These rounds are fairly accurate, and very capable of dropping unarmored players in two shots to the chest, and will also generally punch through the early to mid game level 3 and 4 armor vests relatively easily. Both the SKS and the Vepr or AKM do have some ammo capacity challenges before you unlock level 2 traders, but you can usually find larger mags on the flea market for a decent price, or loot them during a raid. You can buy the SKS straight up from Propor for about 20,000 rubles, the Vepr trades for 3 horse statues from Skier, and the AKM can be traded for 3 cans of Tushanka, which as I mentioned are pretty easy to find on Interchange. All three of these weapons are also pretty common to find in raids, so it shouldn't be a struggle to get a hold of one. If you prefer the AK-74 series, it's still very possible to main them in the early game, but you do need to scavenge for boxes of BT or BP ammo if you want to get through armor, because the PS and PRS rounds just don't really cut it against any decent vests. If you're looking to get a red dot sight onto your Vepr or AK right away as well, you can buy the Ultimac handguard from Skier, and then add the Burris fast fire sight from Peacekeeper, which is a pretty big upgrade from Iron Sights. The PP-19 is also still a great early game weapon, if only because of how much firepower you can get for such a cheap price. For 18,000 rubles, you can get a fully automatic weapon with cheap 30 round mags and some of the cheapest ammo in the game. Against low level unarmored players and scavs, it will shred through their chest really easily, and its low recoil makes spraying for the head or legs a good option against lightly armored enemies. You can also add the Cobra Reflex Sight from Proper for less than 10,000 rubles if you prefer that over Iron Sights, and it can definitely help keep you accurate during full auto fire at close range. In terms of new weapons for the early game, the standouts are the M9 pistol and the MP5K submachine gun. I think the M9 is probably the best value for a pistol in the early game, at just over $100, and it's definitely a good choice for pistol runs or as a cheap but really effective sidearm when you're taking out a Mosin or an SKS. The MP5K is a really cool addition to the level 1 traders as well, giving you access to a very high fire rate weapon right at level 1. It's not quite as effective as a full sized MP5, and not as easy to control as the PP19, but it really shines at close range and can drop low armored enemies really fast. The ADAR is also still a great weapon for the early game, but even though M855 ammo is available at Peacekeeper level 1, I still found myself mostly using AKMs because of how reliable the P ammo seems to be against level 3 and even level 4 armor. At the end of the day, use what you like and what works best for you, but in my experience, these weapons I mentioned really shine in the early game when you need something basic but reliable. I hope these pointers can help you get through the early game grind and build up a nice little stockpile to work with for the rest of the game. 
The first 15 levels definitely didn't get any easier in 0.12, but they did get more interesting, and I think that's a great step forward. It's been fun making progress on the hideout, and with each upgrade, I actually do feel like I've gained something that was worth my time and the rubles that I invested in it. I'll be streaming more of the 0.12 patch on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jdogthewise, and I'd love to see you drop by, so I'll leave a link for that in the description. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below. And until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.